Welcome to this edition of the Long Haul Partner video tutorial series. Uh, this video is going to deal with our Take It or Leave It calculator. It's uh, going to walk you quickly through how you can compare two different loads. Uh, notice load one, load two. We won't mess with load three or load four today. Obviously, you can compare four loads if you wish. Um, one note right away, you've got to check the box up here if any columns you're going to use or they won't auto-compute. You've got a reminder note up there. Um, we're going to fill in a bunch of load information and down at the bottom here it's going to show us a half a dozen different metrics for how much money each load will earn. That's the whole point of doing this. You can compare which load will be more profitable. In the future, we'll show you other tutorials to show how to play with the load to make the load more profitable once you select it. But we're not going to deal with that today. Now, very quickly, uh, we're looking at two loads here that we're considering committing to. And uh, right off the bat, we're going to look at, at the income from these loads. Uh, estimated gross vehicle weight for the two loads is 72.3 and 76.8. Now, please note that this is your gross vehicle weight. It's not just what you've got in the box or on the flatbed. Uh, this is the empty trailer, the empty, not the empty, but the tractor, and the load. Everything we got. Gross vehicle weight in pounds. Uh, paid trip miles. Uh, one of these is 980 miles going to pay us for. The other is 1,230 miles with a longer trip. Baseline haul rate for these loads, the first load, one is $2 a mile, the second one is $2.10 a mile. That does not include the fuel surcharge. So here's your base mileage rate for the load. These green boxes, when you're filling this out, you come down here and hit the compute button, and uh, these, are, these green boxes will auto-calculate for you. And you have to hit the compute button before they'll do that. Now, uh, paid empty miles. Uh, we are getting paid for some empty mileage on both of these loads. The first one's 35 miles at 65 cents a mile. The other one's 20 miles at 65 cents a mile. So we've got some empty mileage paid going on here. Now we'll get down to our fuel sur surcharge calculation for the, what they call the pass-through fuel surcharge. Uh, estimated price per gallon at the pump where we're picking up these loads, uh, both $3.95 per gallon. Uh, industry average miles per gallon. We're going to be using six miles per gallon uh, for these calculations. If yours is different, put in whatever. This does autofill. See these dash boxes? This is autofilling from the OO weekly expense sheet. It's typically in industry, we see this six miles per gallon. Benchmark price per gallon. This can vary. Uh, we plugged in a dollar thirty here. That's what's agreed in the uh, uh, paperwork. And this is going to give us a calculated fuel surcharge rate of 44 cents a mile for each load. Our total is going to be 431 versus 541. That's because obviously 980 miles versus 1230 minutes. Again, these boxes will be empty when you're filling this out unless you press the compute button. And you can take a look at the auto calculation. Now, I should also comment, I filled this all out for you ahead of time to, to save time in the video. Uh, you don't want to sit here and watch me fill this in, although when you're doing this, it only takes a couple of minutes. But since I'm talking and yakking, you know, we'll be here for half an hour if I fill it in and talk. All right, now we're going to get into expenses, okay? This upper part, here's what we're going to get on the first load, $2,413 at settlement. The second load, $3,177 at settlement. Um, now, we want to determine our estimated total trip time. The first thing we want to look at is the number of hours until I can leave the shipper with each of these loads. This first load, I can't get out of there for about four hours. Uh, this second one, uh, they'll load me right away. I can get right out of there. I figure I can get out of there with my paperwork in hand in about two hours. Normal unobstructed highway cruising speed. Uh, I figure I'm going to run about 62 miles an hour on both of these. I'm not in a big hurry on either one of them. Uh, I'm estimating that's going to give me an average driving speed anticipated during the trip of about 52 uh, miles per hour. Is what I'll average with 
traffic and stop lights and whatever. And that auto calculates again when you hit the compute button down here. Uh, it says that uh, this first trip is going to require 19.41 driving hours, and the set to second one about 24 and a half driving hours. Now, obviously, and I'm not going to get into it today, we'll do it in a future tutorial, but this load right here, we're right on the borderline where down here we've got 20 hours, two 10 hour uh, off duty breaks for each load. This one's right on the cusp of where we could possibly get this down to one 10 hour day. Uh, one way to do it would be to bump this up to 68 miles an hour and see what that did to our driving time and all. But we're not going to get into that today. We're going to save that for the future. Today I just want to walk you through how you fill these things up. So back up here we're going to average, uh, we're estimating about 52 miles an hour if we're trying to do some stuff at 62. Gives us our driving hours. Now plug in your average time for a rest fueling break while you're driving. Now this isn't necessarily for lunch or for a shower, but maybe you're going to fuel the truck, maybe you're going to run in and get a vitamin water, a sandwich, whatever. I usually figure about 45 minutes for a stop like that. Uh, get off the freeway, get in the truck stop, get into the fuel island, islands, uh, blah, blah, blah. Now, when you enter this in, you're using decimal hours, okay? I've got 0.75 in here. That's three quarters of an hour. If you estimate 30 minutes, you put 0 0.5 in here. Uh, 15 minutes would be 0.25, and a full hour would be 1.00. Now, uh, see over here, we've got some notes telling you how these look. Uh, also, if you go into the, uh, the help menu, there is a user guide, and it calculates all of these in five-minute increments. Um, based on this, cal this number of driving hours and these breaks, uh, and it assumes, this auto calculates, assuming a break every three hours, right now, okay? So that means that breaks for fuel, lunch, showers, and everything, we're going to have 4.85 hours of breaks on this trip, 6.15 hours of breaks on this trip. Now, on this load too, there's no way we're going to get this load anywhere without two 10 hour breaks. Uh, we'll be stopping tonight and again tomorrow night. This one is borderline, but right now it looks like we're going to be stuck with two 10 hours on it. Uh, next item, um, do we have any additional pickups or drops? Any additional load or unload time? No, we're putting in zero, but if we did, this is where we'd put it in the number of hours for that. Uh, time is money, remember. Now, the expected waiting time to unload once we reach our consignee, there are no intermediate drops. Uh, both cases, I'm figuring we're going to have to wait an hour to get unloaded. So now we're, we've got our total pickup weight and trip hours required, 49 and 53 respectively, uh, divided by 24 hours, and this includes all your downtime, all right? Your 20-hour breaks the whole, your 10-hour breaks the whole deal. Uh, estimated days to deliver, 205. See how that's on the cusp? We might be able to save us a whole day here. This one, no, we're stuck with this guy. Total non-driving trip hours required. On this trip, we've got uh, 29.85. This one, 29.15. Look at how close those turned out. Interesting. Uh, I would have thought this one would be higher, but it's not that much higher. Estimated fixed cost of trip downtime. This load's costing us $261. This one, $255. Uh, so interestingly, this load. Uh, is got a higher cost for downtime on it than this one, although it's, it's $6. It's not a big deal. All right, now we're going to get into some train adjustments uh, for whether you're in flatlands, hills, or mountains. Uh, this calculator, take it or leave it, will adjust your fuel economy for the type of train you're going to be averaging. I notice this first load I've entered one for flatlands. The second one, I've got two. We're going to be going through hills on this uh, load, too. Uh, now, 
percentage of paid miles not compensated. If you're being paid by pub meter or odometer uh, or GPS, your what we call practical miles, your actual driven trip miles, may be the same as your paid miles, which are sometimes referred to as short miles. If that's the case, you'll enter zero here. But for load one, I'm estimating that the actual numbers I'm going to drive for this trip uh, are going to be about 3% over what we're being paid, and about 4% for the second load. Now remember, paid miles were entered up here on top, on 980 on this one, uh, load two is 1230. So we're going to adjust those by 3 and 4% respectively. So our estimated practical trip miles are going to be 1,009 and 1,279. So the miles will not get good yet. Deadhead miles. Both of them, I'm um, going to be driving about 10 miles that I'm not going to be paid for. LHP refers to those uh, unpaid miles as uh, deadhead miles. Uh, that's as opposed to uh, paid empty miles, which we did have uh, up above here with our revenues. Uh, we had on this uh, trip, we had 35 empty miles paid on this load and 20 on this load. But in addition to that, we also got on each of these trips 10 deadhead miles that will not be paid. This gives us a total driving miles, including these 10 dead mile, deadhead miles, uh, 1,019 for this trip, 1,289 for this trip. Uh, now, uh, from the OO weekly expense sheet, uh, our operating cost per mile at 80,000 pounds plus or minus, that's very close to fully loaded. On flat terrain, we figured out our operating cost per mile. You can see the dash box. These numbers are auto filling from the OO weekly expense sheet and our total operating cost to fix and variable expenses is figured at $1.84 a mile. All right. Now, below that, another auto calculation, operating cost per mile adjusted for weight and terrain. It also adjusted for driving speed. For example, if your load was lighter than 80,000 pounds, and both of these are, it's going to adjust uh, and improve your, your fuel economy a little bit because you're lighter. Um, this load will not be adjusted for terrain because it's some flat land. This load is adjusting the fuel economy, making it worse because we're running in the hills. So there's an adjustment here. Um, and then for average speed, I'm planning to cruise at 62. All right, that's seven miles an hour over 55 miles an hour. And so for operating, that's going to cost about seven tenths a mile per gallon. Uh, worse fuel economy because I'm driving at 62. We can see here the calculator has adjusted our dollar 84 average uh, operating cost per mile upwards in both cases, slightly more for load two because of the hills. So this gives us a trip operating cost uh, uh, here of 2,000 and 2,600 respectively. So our total estimated expenses, including downtime up here and trip operating cost, 2,288 for load one, 2,873 for load, load two. And now we finally come down to projected net income. That's these green boxes here. And these are basically one, two, three, four, five, six rules of thumb that you can compare these two loads with, okay? Uh, net estimated before tax earnings. This is the total amount that your truck business is going to earn. And let me talk about this very quickly. Um, in the OO weekly expense sheet, you will have entered, uh, in this case, 38 cents a mile for yourself as uh, the driver. That is not included in this number. Uh, that payroll expense, that labor expense to pay you as a driver, uh, in the first case, let me calculate that. You've got, 
980 miles here at 38 cents a mile, you've got $372 that you've got paid for driving the truck as a driver expense in addition to this 125.17. So you've actually earned $497.57 here. But this instant here, we are only looking at the, the trucking business profitability, not what salary you pay. Uh, this again requires two hats. Uh, when you're an owner-operator with a single truck, one of your hats that you wear is as the driver. And you should be paying yourself a suitable salary as the driver for driving the truck. That's got nothing to do with profit your business earns. Your second hat is as the owner-operator business owner, the guy or the gal who owns the truck. And when you're wearing that hat, you don't care about that salary. You care about these numbers right here, your before tax earnings, your profit. Um, obviously, this second load is uh, more than double the first load. It's quite a few more miles. But uh, that's what these numbers are. This is 125 and 303, respectively. Net estimated before tax earnings, and that's to the truck or to the business, depending on how you think of it. And this is before tax, but after all expenses. All right? This is net before tax. And then that number gets breaking out different ways because all of us think differently. We're all individuals. Some of us like to think per mile. Some of us like to think per day. Some of us like to think per hour. However you think, the calculator gives you a number of different things here that hopefully will be a metric that works with how your mind works. So this next thing, net revenue earned per trip day, 6106 and 135. Well, that just comes from the net before tax earnings divided by the estimated days up here. That's what that is. Okay, it's pretty simple. Net rate earned per driving hour, uh, 645 an hour versus 1235 an hour. Uh, again, this is the number of driving hours required for the trip. Uh, then you, you calculate that up here. Remember that? Total number of driving hours required, 1941 and 2460. Uh, dividing your net revenue by that number of hours gives you your net rate earned per driving hour. A net rate earned for waiting and total trip hours. This is for your dining. So you got an hour waiting at the consignee. We have two hours, uh, we have four hours on this load, so we can leave the shipper two hours on here. These things add up. So your net rate for waiting in total trip hours, uh, which, which includes your downtime, 254 an hour versus 565 an hour. Uh, net rate earned per driven mile, uh, 12 cents and 24 cents. This is based on practical miles, okay? Your total driven miles for these trips is calculated right here. This includes your paid empty miles, your deadhead miles, your 3% and 4% estimated uh, unpaid miles because the paid mileage is zip code to zip code, and it's a little bit short. Not bad, but it is a little short. And so you get that. And then this bottom number, net, net return on trip investment. Return on investment, your ROI. I put that in there. A lot of people... Uh, like to look at that. ROI is a popular term. Frankly, I, I personally think it's kind of meaningless. Uh, I like this number up here. How much money am I going to make? That's what I care about. I don't really care about this down here, but if you're an ROI, ROI person, maybe you're more sophisticated than I am. Uh, this trip's got a return on investment. Uh, and remember, your total investment here is right here. This is where your total estimated trip expense. This is what you're investing in this trip. If you think of this trip as, as basically a business plan, you're investing 2288 here, you're going to make 125 anyway. Your ROI is 5% here, 11% here. Just for yucks, I will take an extra minute. And let's just play with this. Let's go up here and change this to 68 miles an hour. All right. That's, that's the assume we're going to bump that to 58 for our average. And if we do that, 
let's see if we can cut that down by 10 hours. And let's recompute that little puppy and see what the heck happens. Uh, driving faster, we're going to use more fuel. Look at this, this is interesting, and I would say very unusual. Uh, driving six miles an hour faster, I would assume that this is going to cost more money, not make more money. And of course it is costing more money uh, in terms of fuel cost. But we saved 10 hours of downtime here by doing that. And uh, it turns out that in dollars, uh, we came out about the same place, 125, remember? Versus it went up to 129. Bumped us 1% on the ROI. Not a big deal, but the more important thing here is that we gained an entire day by not having to take the second 10 hour break. So here's a case where you can not just use take it or leave it to uh, compare two loads. You can also play within a load and see if you can manage the trip in a way that makes you more money. And in this case, if you could average 68 instead of 62, you could reduce, you could remove a 10 hour break. You're not gonna really make any more money, a couple bucks only. But you save a whole day that now you can go grab another load and have a quicker turnaround time uh, than what we had before. Anyway, this is basically how the, uh, the take it or leave it calculator works. You can compare up to four different loads here. Uh, first time or two you do this, it'll take a few minutes. But once you get used to it, uh, you can take your smartphone or your tablet while you're eating lunch enter in your load data, you can get this down to two, three, four minutes, and bang, uh, you can see here, uh, if you're just looking at dollars, uh, load two is the load you want, okay? Uh, this load is going to earn you 135 net dollars per day versus 84 dollars per day. I mean, it's, it's almost double in every category. It's not double, but it's close. Uh, so here's a case where the take it or leave it calculator compares two loads that are, are very similar. 72,000 versus 76. Uh, mileage a little less. Uh, line haul not much different. Fuel surcharge identical. And you think, well, okay, you know, not that much difference. This guy's got more miles. Uh, so of course it's going to earn more money. But it's also a better load for you in terms of uh, amount of money earned per day, per hour, per mile. It's better in every single regard. Now, this is a case where this calculator is showing you how you can bump up your net revenue on this trip. And when you do this every day, every week, every, every week that you're out on the road, you can start bumping your income from say fifty five thousand a year to 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 seventy five thousand a year or maybe more. It depends how aggressive you want to get. But here's a case where you're working uh, smarter and, and not just harder and that's the whole point of long haul partner and these calculators. Well, thank you very much for tuning in. I hope I didn't overdo it with this. And uh, we'll come back at you with another taker to leave a calculator in a week or so. And we'll show you again not so much how to compare two loads, but how to take one load and figure out how to turn it into significantly more money for yourself. That's it for today, partners. Thank you so much.